Okay, thank you everyone online for coming. Um, we're very happy today to have DK, is it, can, can I just introduce you as DK Lee? Sure. Um, to have DK Lee from, from Boston University here presenting uh, his work on, on generative AI and, and human creativity. Uh, his, his work spans a, a lot of really interesting topics that people here really care about, um, largely about sort of the economics of, of like text and, and now image data. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Deacon, and take it away. Yeah, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Uh, yeah, so I'll present this uh, generative AI, human creativity and art. This is with uh, my student, Eric Zhou, joint work with, it, uh, with him. Tiny.cc slash genart, you can get the paper that we uploaded. Uh, and every art here, we created it using either Midjourney or Stable Diffusion. <laughs> so, I mean, I think everybody here knows like these old news. Last year, uh, you know, AI generated artwork won the first, the first place in a Colorado uh, state art fair, right? And then, you know, like, I think three judges were interviewed about it, and two are not even angry. Uh, <laughs> but other artists were. Uh, I think another one came shortly after. Actually, this one, this uh, guy uh, entered mid-journey generated photography con into a photography contest in one first place. And he refused, citing you know, ethical concerns and whatnot, okay? And this was that photo generated through mid-journey, okay? And not too long ago, a few days ago, November 13, 2023, psychological studies actually published a paper saying, you know, they did some experiments and then people find AI generated faces are more real than actual <laughs> photos. And that's, uh, they talk about the psychology of that. So I think we're at a past point where you can more, you know, be skeptical about can AI uh, tools be creative or used to, used to make creative uh, artifacts. Uh, here's a brief history of text to image AI. So attention GAN came about shortly after GAN, Generative Adversarial Network, came out. It was all the what, a rage, and everybody was, you know, and the conditional GAN, I've used a couple of times, uh, but it was not mainstream, right? You don't, you don't see people you know, <laughs> training with the mode collapse. It's incredibly hard to do so. Uh, and then DALI-1 came out, 2021, but it was not too much of an actual success. They, they never released the usage, but some you know, uh, estimate maybe 50,000 or something, tens of thousands. It was not mainstream. Then it was not until March of 2022, uh, last year, uh, that it became very mainstream with the mid-journey. Uh, 15 million users, um, and DALI 2, DALI 3 just came out, right? Uh, incredibly slow, but still it's pretty useful. Uh, 2022, DALI 2 came out, 2 million users. Stable Diffusion, the open source stability AI, then released in 2022, August, uh, with the Stable Diffusion, and now there's an incredible amount of um, open source tools uh, for that. Has anyone used any of these? Okay, what, what if, I just want to know, what, like, what have you used? Have you anyone used GAN? Okay, one person. Stable Diffusion is DALI 2 and 3. Yeah, okay, DALI, Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey. Okay, what do you guys like? I'm just curious, just I'm digressing, but I like to say maybe Stable Diffusion, no, no, Mid Journey and DALI is more like iPhone, mm -hmm. and Stable Diffusion exactly like Android. Like, it's easy to come up with the like, good looking stuff with Mid Journey and DALI 3. Uh, stable diffusion, if you want to do something specific, you need to do a lot of work, but you get more control, like control net and things like that. Yeah. I think what I liked about the journey was the Discord interface, because you could see what everyone else was pushing to the model. Yes. It felt very remixy, like you, know, yes. you could riff on other people's ideas. Yeah, I was uh, pitching this like just today and then like a bunch of months ago, that you can scrape that data and study yeah. that exactly, but I just, you know, um, yeah, if anyone wants to work on that, I mean, uh, yeah, so that's, that, that's a bit of the history. And then computational creativity literature goes back far. Uh, philosophy of creativity goes back millennia, as, as much as humans can remember, right? But <clears throat> there is a, a, by the way, if you're interested in computational creativity, there is a very nice conference, international ICCC, International Conference on Computational Creativity. They got all the, uh, the original, the OGs of the computational creativity and the, the board of that, and then a committee 
uh, committee members. So computational creativity early work sought to understand philosophical nature of creativity. Can you know, AI uh, or computational agent create what is called creative artifact? What, it, what, what does it mean for something to be creative, right? Uh, and how can computer-generated artifacts be evaluated as a creative work, right? And then they started uh, talking about, hey, agents, whether it's a human or AI, uh, in order for them to create a creative artifact, whether it's art or whatever, they need to first you know, uh, recognize that, right? Before even recognizing that, you need to represent it, and they're like works on that, and I have some works in that too. Uh, and in this field, widely used criteria for creativity are twofold. One is novelty, uh, how different an artifact is from known artifact in its class, right? that's uh, required. And second is value. It needs to, it's very context, uh, context dependent. Uh, it needs to have some sort of utility, performance, or value or attractiveness, right? And that's very contextual, right? Art, you know, to some it may be valuable, to some it's not, right? But you, uh, bottom line, in order for something to be creative, uh, it has to be novel and valuable, okay? So the question is, uh, the first one is kind of easy, and I think everybody knows. How does adoption of generative AI affect human creative productivity? Obviously going to increase, but that's the first sort of question to get it out there. And second is generative AI enabling humans to produce more creative content. And that's, uh, that's interesting. And I think the third one, uh, we, we also explore for whom and when is gen AI effective? Okay, I'll talk about that. So the empirical setting is an art sharing platform. Uh, about 5 million uh, posts, it's still scraping, 50,000 unique users, an entire posting history. It is one of the largest uh, art sharing platform that has been there for more than a uh, yeah, decade. Uh, about 6,000 known AI adopters with 1.5 million images. It's about 15 terabytes of data now. All right, so this platform actually has a, a policy that it has to be you know, lots of platforms are adopting this. You have to actually um, reveal that you're using AI if you are, right? Um, AI image should be clearly marked as such. Images from DreamUp will be, that's their own version. Uh, and then either the title and tags are provided by the users, which may signify AI adoption or assisted. Policy requires them to reveal it. And, but you know, we had to actually build our own classifier. Uh, if it's published, before January 2021, we assume that it's no AI. Uh, don't, you don't imagine people training their own GANs and then publishing it there. Even if, it's, even if they do, it's like very small numbers, I can imagine. If it's after that, we use NLP-based classifier description and tags to identify if it's AI or not. For example, people would uh, write stable diffusion or mid <coughs> AI assisted, things like that. So we use that to classify. If not, then we go at the visual level. Uh, we ended up, uh, this, this was a couple of months of work, but then they updated and you have to re-update it every time. And then we stopped doing that. We, so we do lots of just sensitivity analysis later on. And then, you know, just replicate the result. So here's an adoption timeline in causal samples. Uh, this is our causal sample. Mid-journey has been released here, Valley 2, stable diffusion. You can see majority of adoption happening after um, that day in our causal sample. So empirical strategy, we use a different diff event study, Callaway, Santana, um, AI adoption. The, the, the reason being AI adoption for different users happens at different time, obviously, and we think there is some heterogeneous treatment effect. So this uh, method accounts for that, right? And we also balance panels by estimating propensity score uh, using a bunch of observables. And we also ran this with a synthetic control, and we got the same result, not going into that. So outcome variables are very simple. Uh, productivity, just the log of monthly number of posts. These are art, right? And the value is favorites per view, when we control for view. Novelty, which I'll talk about how we operationalize it, is pairwise distances for each artifact compared to all prior artifacts. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. All right, so how do we then uh, compare, you know, extract or define you know, uh, novelty and what aspect do we define novelty or value or you know, actually how do we even characterize art, right, in a massive scale? So 
Humans can express creativity via two main ways in digital artifacts, uh, arts, work, content, and visuals. So content is basically, it concerns the focal object and relationship within this uh, digital art, right? What's in it and how they are related to each other or what are they doing, things like that. Visuals consider just the pixel level stylistic and thematic elements of the artwork. And so here's a two by two. You can see uh, you, you have the same content and visuals, so both are some sort of cats. And you can imagine they might be coming from some same animation of sort. The visual uh, style looks similar. This is ba uh, basically same content. They, it's both cats, but different visuals. <clears throat> but this one looks more like a steampunk or you know, some sort of a different visual, it, it, they, it, like as if they belong in a different animation. Here, different content, it's a cat and a woman versus woman, but same visual, both look like some sort of steampunk, right, similar pixel. And then you have a different content and visuals. So that's how we characterize different, you know, content and visuals, okay? All right, so how do we operationalize? Um, just to give a sketch of that, for content, we use Blip2. It's a, it's a model by Salesforce that basically that connects um, uh, images and text using you know, these uh, 129 million of images. And so they connect the, these two modalities. You know? And even now, these two models, uh, some variation of it is ranking very high in a lot of the uh, benchmarks. So we use this. Then we use Blip2 to get a, a description of the content of, of the picture, right? That's a text data. And we use BERT to just turn that caption into vector representation. So basically, we streamline using this model. Uh, and then later, we uh, get the cosine distance. And that's how we can get the distance for novelty, right? So you can imagine if a new art pops up, you can get a vector representation of that based on the caption that Dyna, uh, not, Blip2 provides, and then you can compare that vector representation to all the other, um, everything that existed before. Right? That's how we get it. Visual, we use Dino V2 by Meta. This is, a, again, it's self-supervised uh, transformer model that basically, it, it just takes about 142 million images and does all kinds of different visual training um, contrastively to get a sense of statistical regularities of the pixel patches near each other. And then end result, it sort of understands the images at a pixel level, okay? Uh, so we, this then creates image embedding vectors directly. Then again, we use cosine distance to get the visual uh, distance pairwise, okay? Any questions on operationalization? Okay. Quite straightforward. So here's an example of content feature extraction with Blip. Uh, you can see this one. It's just like description of a cat and mouse are playing together on a table with an empty space in between. Um, this one, cat wearing an ornament top hat and holding a clock. Mushroom cloud, with some flames and smoke coming out of it. And by the way, feel free to, you know, I interrupt you at any time. Um, so pairwise cosine distance, this one was smaller, uh, so closer to each other, as opposed to mushroom cloud and a cat. This one, waterfall and tree in the background, somehow pink flowers on them, uh, closer to this one, perhaps like some, you know, pink blob, maybe, yeah. Do you have any examples of, of cosine distances that are much smaller, or like, like kind of at the extremes? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just, we just took a random one. Okay. Yeah. Because I just feel like it's still, can you go back to the last one? Um, like the, the I would find that like they're pretty similar, the two, the two cat images, you know. You're, you're talking about the distribution of the, the distances. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, we haven't. So I, I wonder like, the, yeah, what's at the extreme if these are, if these are point set in sort of a way. Yeah, I mean, I'll show you a distribution of yeah. distances. In fact, a histogram comparing mm -hmm. post and tr pre. So you can probably get a sense of it, but it's also kind of like, Chunked up. Yeah, okay. These distances are comparing the distances in the captions. Yes. Okay. So it's basically strictly on description, what's in it, content. Okay. Yes. And this, uh, the, the visuals, is there any sense in which those image embeddings could also capture content? Or is that mostly just the style? Yeah. So I, um, 
<clears throat> Dino V2 is uh, based on you know the pixel level um, vision, like you know um, distinguishing you know object and things like that. So I guess in a way it, it sort of would have some content, but it's mostly at the uh, pixel level visual okay. uh, vision object statistical regularity. So that okay. And you use uh, Google Arts as a benchmark. Google what? Arts. Google okay. Arts, you know, like the museum that have been photographed by a lot of pictures. Like a half a million uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can use it for the same artist, but like to see if the their voice makes sense, or even as a benchmark for your other. Uh, We're scrapping that for other paper, so we can do that. Yeah, but the thing is, um, if you read uh, like all of these models, they have done a lot of groundwork for it anyway, like internal. Validity, external validity, they have tested on a slew of data sets, which Google Art is actually, I think, part of it. I don't remember. But they get like, they amalgamate like lots of data sets, including Coco, you know, the usual stuff. And then this one is not tagged, this one is much tagged. This one actually, Dino stands for a distillation uh, with no uh, uh, label, and they come up with some cool stuff. All right, so this is a visual feature extraction with Dino V2. And some, some illustration of like cosine similarity. Obviously, this one is the closest to this out of all of this, right? If you change color, you know, distance de increases or similarity decreases, right? So, Dino V2, just like uh, everybody's favorite like language model, they use transformer, visual transformer, and it's self supervised. Um, and they learn all these uh, visual statistical similarities, okay? And then this mushroom is not close to this picture. <laughs> All right, so data exploration. Um, so this is an example of one user in our data set, uh, a typical sort of journey of what happens. In June of 2020, this user, uh, you know, was always creating this uh, Pokemon or Digimon, whatever the, you know, whatever these are. Uh, they, the characters, uh, she or he would create these, right? And then, uh, this person took a hiatus from October 2021 to September 22, and then reactivated again with new and improved, uh, aka he, he or she adopted. They adopted it, adopted uh, AI-generated generative tools. And then you start seeing all these different varieties of uh, art pieces, some of which, uh, if you have used the, these tools, kind of like you can imagine, you can recognize some of the signatures. They kind of look <laughs> generated, right? Um, like, for example, this is like this, like, you know, everybody creates this, right? This steampunk thing. Um, and then space, right? Yeah. Um, and here is again some, some of our data set randomly pulled how these are most novel content. So these were most unlike what came before in a content or what's in the artwork. So this one is a fractal landscape. Um, this one is some trans magnetic excitation field. Um, compared to other things, this was in our data set, just like randomly sampled. Here's another one, but it's least novel content. Something, um, you can see a mountain, it's very common and a portrayal. These are just like least novel, what our data set says. There is most novel visual at the pixel level. Uh, one is a opal dragon scale. This is a C within a C. Again, some visual novelty there. And this is the least novel visual thing. You can see these look like some artwork in a museum. So, uh, a lot of training data set probably has this, and it, you know, so. Again, this was created with stable diffusion. This one also, I, uh, I think, was created with one of the, yeah, it's mid-journey. So these were visually least novel, one of them, two of them. And this is uh, just the uh, value, most valuable versus least valuable. In this uh, website, someone actually uploaded a Shutterstock photo. <laughs> Obviously, it got no love. Zero favorites for you. Uh, boy stable diffusion. I don't know why people don't like it. The most valuable, this one, actually gathered favorites 61% of the time it was viewed. 
So this was one of the most valuable, mice and cocoa. So this is the value, right? In our case, it's defined for us by the platform. All right, so now let's, let me go into this uh, result. I think there's no uh, surprise here. Productivity goes up, I think, you know, nothing interesting. Uh, significant lift in creative productivity uh, within the first several months. It actually jumps to 100, so they double it at some point and then stables off to like 25% uh, pre, uh, compared to pre-treatment. We're still collecting more, we'll see maybe two years down the road, we'll see if it's still, you know, lingers or goes to zero or, you know, or goes up again, I don't know, we'll see. But it seems to be stabling off at around 25% for now. For average adopter, this amounts to about seven additional posts during the adoption month and 15 additional posts in the following month. And then, you know, goes to, goes to like three to four, yeah. Do you know if this is driven by like adopters seeing an increase or do not adopters exit the platform? No, this is, this is basically comparing the adopter versus non. Yeah, or, so I guess I'm saying, is, is the increase due to non-adopters exiting because like they can't compete with this, or is it because of um, more images being added to the platform? No, I mean, we, we, we ran it a couple of times with like a sample control still holds, so I don't think it's uh, people exiting. Okay. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just easier to produce, so I think the fix, uh, like the cost to generate artwork is just profiting. Okay. Or, and then some editing for you know, some, some of these people. I'm, I think more, I'm more, not worried, but I'm thinking about people who enter around zero because there's this like novel new technology like I've never used. Oh, so, so our sample data set is they basically, all have, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we found them first in the data in there. Yeah, they were there before. Right. And we, we ensure that. Okay. Yeah. I think the extensive margin is also really interesting. Like I expect there's mm -hmm. also, you know, a big, big impact there, but. Yeah, so, I, so, so we have like some follow-up papers where we're trying to explore all of that as we discuss like what happens to controls who don't adapt. I mean like going back to the story of like when photography first came, everybody's like, oh, who's going to do portrayal? Like no one's going to, well, what, happen, well what, what will happen to artists, right? People are talking about it and it was like a giant like, you know, panic for the artists. And then impressionism came as a result of that, right? Like people are distinguishing themselves. You know, now that this portrayal can be better than what I do, how can I distinguish myself? And you know, a bunch of different new art forms were created. We'll probably see something similar. I want to explore that as well. Any other questions on this? Quite obvious in terms of like what happens. Uh, yeah, this is value. Over time, value of produced artifacts also increase. So again, value is defined as favorites earned per view, right? So in this case, overall, it's 1% increase in the likelihood of receiving favorites per view. That doesn't seem much, but if you, if you actually pre-adoption, uh, it was rated at 2% favorites per view on average. So that's 50% increase on value, okay? Now we also looked at the uh, views per post and favorites per post without, this value is a favorites per view. We also got the views and actual just total favorites. And they also increased by 8.6% versus 18.6. So again, this is comparing people who adopted versus never adopted or people who didn't adopt at that point, but it, it will eventually adopt, right? That's the how it's not to adopt it. Do you think this is a, there's like a fixed level of favorites, like a fixed supply of, of favoriting and it's I see you know, crowding saying, out other things they would have favorited and just sort of shifting what's getting liked. It's, I mean, it's still a meaningful impact either way, but. So, so it, 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 yeah, so I mean, all this is saying that we know is that uh, compared to non-adopters, yeah. they're getting more yeah. uh, views, favorites, and favorites per view, but whether it's, uh, the size of the pie increasing, yeah. or people just rating more, yeah. or uh, it's a cannibalization, I, I don't know. It could be both. Mm. Do you think yeah. this is people getting better? Like they're, they're just, they're, they figure out how to make better images with this technology. Like what, what we're seeing is like learning. I, I, I definitely believe a huge portion of it. Lots of existing papers, I think, uh, a lot of people here have written that, you know, the bad one, the mid ones, kind of shift to better ones, right? 
and then I I kind of don't believe the bad like the the good ones are you know a lot of papers show that the good ones are just like getting worse sort of thing I think it's they're just measuring the wrong thing but I think yeah it, it is I think robustly shown in many different studies that bad crappy and the mid kind of like get shifted up up to a certain point and I think that's also being could you actually could you interact this post period with the like people's uh, pre period average ratings or something? I have a slide, okay. <laughs> Sorry, no. and that's correlational. But I have exactly that. Okay. Yes. And you, yes. So the pool of people who view these things and like create these things do they change too? <clears throat> so do you do you have any way of like the accounting for that? Maybe like if I have what if I like for example. If I was buying these things from the Shutter stock in the past, uh, there's a tool for it. I just go and use the tool instead of going to the Shutter stock and like buy these things. So, so, so the question is, uh, do you think uh, the the question, if I understand, is uh, are the people giving the ratings are they also changing? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I mean it's continuously getting more new people, I guess. So. Or do old people go out? Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, this is, uh, you know, uh, this is always control, uh, comparing control groups yeah. to the treated. So, oh, sure. yeah, maybe, you know, pro presumably if the matching worked, you know, these, all of these effects would impact the same, hopefully, yeah. So you, you had a classifier of whether something was AI generated or not. And post-adoption, do you find that people generally lean in all into AI art, or do they maintain a mix? And do you think so that, good. like, what would this look like for art that they generated themselves versus with the AIs? That's Does it improve their inherent taste? Or That's a great question. I think we, we also had that in the queue, but we haven't looked at it. Um, this, again, the, the detection was just like, you know, determining the treatment time. Yes. Uh, but that's an that's interesting thing that's in the queue. Because we also want to see what happens to people who never adapt. You know, what do they do? That's interesting. Yes. This maybe not the best post question, but one thing I'm wondering is like the way you label someone as an adopter is that they posted a picture after AI um, was available and then it was classified as AI. Yeah. So they, they yeah, a lot of them they just self identify. Uh, so the mismeasurement can only happen if they adapted earlier, did not reveal. So we do sensitivity analysis for that too. But yeah, what's your question? But so I'm, I'm wondering like in the treatment group, they have to have posted a picture in the post-treatment period. The control group could have just exited and never come back. Um, I wonder if that's why we see this like spike and then decline on the previous Oh, no, no. Like, a lot of them still do post. Uh, like the control group in our sample, causal sample, they still do post. I guess a lot of them do post, but presumably some of them just never post. And could that be one reason that you see the spike and decline? That like, you know, by definition in month, Zero or one, I'm not exactly sure. This one. Everyone in the treatment group posts, I think. Um, but that's not necessarily. I mean, the you're group. saying why the, if, if, if the control group uh, systematically stop posting, this will actually increase, right? Like, that means, like, compared to control, the treated posts way more. Yeah, I guess I'm asking is this the bump in month one? Is it mechanical because we're conditioning on people who post in month one in the treatment group, and that's not. That's really true in the I think this is part. like a, I, like if I if I had more to make a guess, it's just people, you know, it's like this is so cool. I'm gonna produce everything, and then they, it's just like novelty effect just decreasing after a while. <coughs> that, that, that's what I think. I see. Thanks. It could be a bunch of different things, but I feel like that's the you know when it, like when is the last time whoever used Mid Journey or like compare your first few days? Like for me, it was literally a whole day. Uh, like and then like you know spending like spending like an hour on one picture. <laughs> Right? And then now I just like, once in a while, if I have a presentation or slide making, I just go in, um, even though I have a yearly subscription, so I need to use it. But I mean, I, I can run it on my GPU, but not as easy as mid-journey. Stable diffusion is so much work. It's, it's annoying. Control net is unusable. I mean, it's usable, but I'm complaining. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, now we go to the fun part where I'm going to ask you to predict because, oh crap. Nah, crap. Okay. 
<laughs> you didn't see that, right? It went by fast. <laughs> okay. All right. Because like when I when I when I first presented it, people oh it's obvious, oh that's obvious, and then I started giving quizzes, and then like everybody gets it wrong. So like let's do this here. All right. So the next one is a um, content novelty. What what do you think happens to the treated group? Content novelty, remember, is what's in the picture, right? Like the caption, and then comparing it. So imagine. I'm an artist, like I'm not, but like, let's say I use it, right? Let's, I come up with some sort of artwork, right? It's like out there in terms of idea. Um, content, you can think of it as an idea, right? Of what's going to be in it, right? So what do you think will happen? Um, how I operationalize it, as I mentioned, it's embedding, but then if I produce an artwork right now, that gets vectorized and then compared to all the things that came before. Um, and then, I can take either max or average, and we do that both. So what do you think happens to average content novelty? Who says they increase? Average content novelty. I say it increases. OK. About half the room. Who said? Can I assume the other half says decrease? <laughs> oh. OK. So it's a 50-50. I like it. So it actually decreases over time. Average content uh, novelty decreases over time compared to, it could be that, you know, they're just producing same thing more and more, you know, because it's so easy. Uh, reduction in friction, what used to take like days or weeks, now it's just like five minutes or like an hour, right? It could be. Um, how about the max content novelty? Up. Goes up. up. Everybody says up. Okay, yeah, it goes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what this is suggesting is that while there are some inefficiencies on how people express ideas in the digital artwork, the actual the idea landscape is actually expanding, right? So which is a good news. Um, that's what it's suggesting. Again, this is for the tree that people who adopt it, right, compared to controls. Um, how about the visual average novelty? Just one question. This is comparing to the average pre-treatment figure, is that right? Compared to, all of these are, uh, you have a treated, right? People who adopt it. Yeah. And then the control is either who never adapt or people who are going to uh, eventually adapt but did not adapt at that time period. So okay. it's like they're, con they're considered the control groups. But the, the outcome is the difference in either the average or max novelty of an image, but it's a distance from something. And so what is the, I guess, reference? Reference is uh, 2022 April, and like, like let's say this, we start at May, then it's literally everything that came before. And then June, it's again everything that came before. So it's done, the time, it's recalculated every time period. But so it's a difference of an image, image from the average image? No, no, we, we take or? a pairwise and then we take the average. Okay. Yeah. So the average across all images that were submitted. Yeah, so artwork one, I see. get the pairwise distance to everything that came before, and then you take the average or the max. Okay. Right? So it's at the art level. Okay. And that gets updated. Presumably also, you can <coughs> imagine this expand, space expanding, and you can control, like obviously, what was novel, like to be novel here is way easier than to, to be novel here because the universe is expanding and we have some uh, work to show that it's you know beyond that too. Yeah, yes? So, Whoever. so this is showing that you're actually expanding the frontier, um, even accounting for the expansion of the frontier between month yes. zero and six. Yes. So the seventh one is even expanding beyond yes. that. Okay. That's that's a good news. Yeah. I mean lots of inefficiency though. People just create like I'll show you a histogram. Like, it's, uh, yeah, people are just like creating the same and thing. It's like cat stuff, right? Do the more yeah. normal stuff also translate to higher value, or like more likes? So I have, uh, I, I'll have that slide. Great question. In a few slides. Yes, Essa? Yeah, well, I was wondering if it, the things become easier for people and they just publish anything as of like the first try, it's just like, like it makes sense and then they publish it as opposed to like creating something which was hard, and then you're not, uh, you're not just like releasing things. So if they were just releasing crap stuff, like this yeah. is a very, um, 
it's a mainstream art sharing, one of the best ones. Uh, and the, the crowd there are free, you know, it's like Reddit crowd, right? Uh, yeah. So what about the reputation of the person? So if there, if like someone who is very famous, do they also like have an increase in the number of the things they publish or? Yeah, yeah. So this, uh, we, we, we're literally working on that's like second paper on the, the, uh, the individual stuff. Yeah, but yeah, well, we'll uh, I'll talk to you in like a few months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to your question about what we expect for visual uh, novels. Yes, yes, let's go back to that. Um, <laughs> like, what I noticed is that depending on the model, some of them are more opinionated about a default style, right? Yeah. So like Mid Journey was trained on a lot of uh, user uploaded art, fantasy style, so mm -hmm. it has a very opinionated view of what things should look like. Mm -hmm. Other models are less opinionated. Do you have a breakdown of that by the model used? No, but the, that's very interesting. I, like, if you think about it, I mean, like, this blows my mind. Like, right, like humans have evolved, right, as a result of like millennia of like, you know, outside forces. Uh, you know, it's embodied experience. We develop and we evolve in a certain way because of the external stimulus, stimuli, and we are built this way. And cognitive bias is because of a lot of these, right? I mean, like the language model, it's, a, it's biased to begin with, but they're like now like 50,000 or like crazy number of it. They all use different data set. They all use like, you know, some slight modifications of the objective functions and training procedures. So it will be interesting to see what the hell is going to happen. Like these are, you know, released into the wild. Um, but I, yeah, like if you've used all three of them, you can kind of tell which one's producing which which I think it's easier if you're a novice uh, at each of these, right? Because, you know, the default, if you don't prompt it well, it's going to get to a default behavior, and that signature is very high. Having said that, algorithms are having problem with this. Uh, like computer, uh, like NVIDIA released a paper a couple of months ago. Uh, like what's worse is to... You know, cat, dog, you know, cat and mouse catch game. Like what happens is if you build it like a detector, it works for a certain version. They release a new one, different signature, so it may not be as good. Then you have to retrain it. You train it, retrain it. And that this is what we were doing. I'm like, this is nonsense. We just do robustness checks, um, sensitivity analysis. But it's interesting. The signatures are very uh, unique. So I think there are also detectors that work on spectral uh, analysis of these things. Uh, but again, like it works, and then like new version comes up, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And then they like mid journey releases different versions, like right? like seven now or six, right? And the stable diffusion has their own different forkings. Any other questions? Yeah, okay, let's go back to the visual. What happens, what do you think will happen to average visual novelty? Who says it goes up? Or who says it goes down? Everyone else? Why? Like, what are some reasoning I'd like to hear? People who say it goes up, why? Well, there's like, oh, sorry. I literally flipped a coin in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a, <clears throat> I mean, if it's relative to kind of what they were doing before, right? Um, I think people, especially artists who are like involved in this community, they try to develop a signature style and they don't really play around with other things because the cost of doing that well is pretty high. And so hmm. given this tool, they're, they're, it's easy to play and say, do this in the style of Monet, do this in the style of like steampunk, etc. And so the exploration, probably a lot higher. Yeah. Now, but, but then everyone's are, everyone's are, there's going to be a lot of Monets. Yes. Is this relative to themselves? Or like to previous, yeah. everybody before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and all, like, you know, control versus the treated, right? Not previous. I misspoke. Control versus the treated. So, so it's not compared to previous. Like, it's just like control group who didn't adopt versus who ever adopted. So I think that that's. I think that people who use it are all going to make a bunch of Monets and steampunk cats, <laughs> or steampunk <laughs> style, whatever, and and the and control are yeah. going to not. So I think it's going to go down. Yeah, it could be that, or it could be a bunch of different reasons. But yeah, it goes down. Like it's it's there's no there's no denying it goes down in this case. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it could be due to many reasons because a lot of these models are trained um, to replicate particular images, right? The stable uh, diffusion. Uh, on that, that's why I thought it was obvious, like, you know, people are going to produce, uh, it could be many different reasons. Like, m reasons are not obvious at all. But, for example, it could be that everybody's novice, right, at prompting. We all suck at, like, they all suck at prompting. So they can't really go, you know, deviate from the, the usual behavior of the model. Or it could be that the training the model, they, they are, they're trained to be uh, reliable and producing same similar stuff, right? For example, DALI 3, their flagship um, announcement was like, DALI 3 creates like what you ask, right? So that it is trained in a way to be uh, behave in a certain way. Uh, so it's like the, the degree of freedom has been reduced, so to speak. So I thought that was why it was obvious. Uh, and the prompting story, yeah. Is the, just like the raw distribution of novelty, like in the pre train, in the pre period? In the control. Yeah, or no, even, yeah. And the, is the distribution of visual novelty like bigger or smaller than the distribution of content novelty? Because I'm like, my intuition is that it would be easier for me to come up with a new object than it would a new style, just like as a human. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference? Do you guys know? What before? was the question? Is like, is the underlying distribution of visual novelty versus content novelty, like, are they similar? Mm -hmm. Or is there a wider distribution in content novelty? Yeah, so, so I think I'll, uh, I'll have a, a distribution slide here <laughs> so coming up. Okay. So you can visually inspect, yeah. Uh, do you have the prompts? Prompts, I don't. Some of these sites have, have the actual prompts that generate the <laughs> Yeah, so, so that was one of the ideas that I, I think um, Mid journey, like because they did it in Discord. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, like maybe some developers, I'm not creating front ends, and let's just use Discord. So I think if we can actually scrape that, you literally know at the individual level what prompts they used, what image they got, when they stopped, and then you can see the entire procedure in a massive scale. So, like, been like pitching this, so like someone joined, like I don't want to like the engineering effort is like high. Uh, but a lot of papers, but yeah, that would be, I think, interesting. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, one hypothesis is that the human is the bottleneck. Indeed. There's a social influence around what prompts to use. Yes. Like, for instance, we've mentioned steampunk like about 100 times already today. <laughs> so I think that in these communities, people get used to saying, oh, in the style of impressionism or in the style of steampunk, and then it's not the model that's constraining, but it's the human that's sort of like just falling back on habit of how to stylize an, an artist. Precisely. I think we, we talk about that too. Like, I think that's correct. Um, I actually ran stable diffusion contest in my class uh, back in February with the, about 100 something people. And it was like, and then I had them do pre-survey, post-survey you know, uh, save their prompts just to see what happens. Um, and people are having, like, they, they, they're stuck on the prompting. It's the different types of creativity, right? So it's like an ideation type of creativity. And they're always stuck on cats. They're always stuck on, like, steampunk or whatever, uh, or uh, space or, you know, style of whatever. So I think it's hard to ideate beyond, like, what people are creating. That's the bottleneck. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, one, one other thing I was thinking about as you were talking about novelty is that um, cosine distance or similarity is one sort of way to think about novelty, but there's, there's a bunch of other ways to think about it. So, um, so for instance, if you, if you look, instead of the cosine distance between an art and the prior community or individual art, you could look at an individual's sort of um, distribution of all of their vectors to see if, if they're getting more diverse or less diverse. And that could go in either direction. So you could be getting, on average, less novel compared to the world, but you could be trying many different things out. So you could see exploration that could be washed out in the population level, but could be happening at an individual level as they're trying new things. But people are basically all trying the same new things simultaneously in parallel. Then you can also think about um, sort of like uniqueness within a person. So you could say, does this one vector 
how distant is it from all the other vectors one at a time? Yes. Rather than looking at just sort of like the, um, the, the distribution of all the vectors from each other and take like an average distance between them or something like that. Yes. These are all different ways of, of getting at what's going on in the creativity. You know? Yeah, this is our second paper that we are currently working on. And we're also collecting the network, like your, you know, your yeah. expertise on how we're trying to also see how, you know, in, like artists influence each other, individual, yeah. you know, this uh, aggregate versus individual, super interesting things to become. Is there, a heter <clears throat> is there a heterogeneity of the technology like the stable diffusion is going to be different from the journey in this novelty of? Oh yeah, I, like you know, we can look at it, but I think the biggest uh, thing here, unless they reveal it, I mean, they, a lot of them do, but like, how do you reliably uh, tell this apart? Um, you could tell uh, there are papers that have done this, you know, try to distinguish which one, but it's getting increasingly hard and hard, and. Yeah, that would be interesting, but one way of like when I was like looking at this, I was like, this stable diffusion really requires a lot of prompting. And to get a good looking one. To get <laughs> something that you can post. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that could be a good proxy for like a significant of prompts maybe for this novelty thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. But I think uh, if someone were to scrape the data I mentioned, <laughs> let's work on it. <laughs> Please, because I think that would be the gold data set. Yes. And what kind of impact that kind of generate photos can uh, make some digital economy? So it looks like the novelty or the contribution of the artwork uh, is decreasing, and it, it looks like it can, it makes some sheer contribution at the end, like three years later. So like, what one model can uh, like make some thing contribution like well i didn't get your question sorry oh so like uh, it looks like you uh did this experiment using one model and the uh the nobles and generation will decrease as time goes on yes visual one yeah yes. so like do you think we have to keep and uh, make some new models oh i see what you're saying uh, based on that timeline uh no i think this is also it's like a the general public adopter outcome right and we did some analysis like actually if you know how to use it well your visual novelty will increase and some individuals actually do so remember this is like what's happening at the average masses right so people on average are decreasing in visual novelty but there are plenty of people uh, who actually increase their visual novelty if they know how to use it so that's the second paper uh, um, so the max, I don't have it here, but it also decreases like crazy. So there is no frontier in visual novelty uh, increasing. Uh, so this, uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to uh, skip through a lot of this. But you can see uh, the green one's post-treatment. Uh, the red one is pre-treatment. These are distances, right? Uh, pre and post distribution of content novelty. Again, that's distances. So you can see clearly that post-treatment kind of uh, goes down. And the mean content novelty goes down. Uh, max content novelty uh, goes, uh, this is, I think, Euclidean. Uh, but you can see the, the max one increases, right? This is showing there's an efficiency, but then increase in the space of the content creative space. This is visual. You can clearly see that everything just chunks up post, you know, this, is, this could be any of the reasons, right? Prompt engineering and skills bad, or the model is just like, checkpointed such, such that they create similar things. Uh, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, and the max one still also goes down, OK? OK, but who is it? Going back to John's question, but, um, this is correlation analysis. We, do, uh, we bucket adapters based on exactly what you suggested. Uh, bottom, lower, upper, and best quartiles of average pre-treatment content and visual novelty. Right? So you can think of content uh, novelty as an ideation ability. Inherently, right? Like, uh, am I able to come up with some new object and relationship that's not out there, right? Visual is more like a pixel level artistic mastery, right? So then we did this, and then this is at the pre treatment content novelty, uh, you know, uh, correlated to the value capture, meaning favorites per view, right? 
So you can see this is bottom, lower, upper, best. Again, all of these are content creativity prior to treatment, right? And then this is impact or correlation on the value. Uh, what happens if they increase um, content versus visual? So what this is saying is that almost all group benefit from good content novelty. So if they are able to ideate, they capture more favorites. Okay? Visual is a different story, except for the very bottom ones um, who had bad ideas pre-treatment, uh, pre and then they sort of, you know, novel, you know, they become novel and visual. They, it translates to favorites review. Everyone else kind of suffered. Okay. Uh, this is same thing with the visual novelty. Think of it as uh, bucketing them by their artistic mastery of visual pixel level mastery or novelty. And you can see again, consistent story, almost all group benefit from good content novelty, but previously best reaped the most benefit. So people who are visually good before, or it could, be, it could mean different thing. They just have a better filter maybe, or they have a better way of better taste. Um, so if they have good idea, they win a lot, right? Kind of makes sense. Uh, visual, again, the ones, if they are really good before and they visually, you know, are no, more novel, it could be an upside down new story or it could be that um, they were really, it's really hard to, for them to be more novel. It could be a very different story, but it's uh, correlational. So, so in the land of mid-journey, content is king. So here I present a shaft value over time. So shaft value, as you all know, is uh, based on cooperative shaft value. What it is good for is it tries to take um, interaction, uh, the, the power set of all the uh, variables, and then try to give you a signal, signal of predictability, like signal worthiness of a variable, right? It's not like coefficient, so interpretation is quite different. But all it's good for is saying, it's actually, what is the predictive signal value, right? Um, you can see that content novelty after a few months increases for predicting value, favorites review, as opposed to visual is like stably flat. Content is king. And then we also ask uh, who captures the value. Value here is measured as favorites earned. So you can first see here, here, this is Lawrence curve. You can see it's very <laughs> concentrated, right? Only a few people capture most favorites is what they're saying, uh, what we're saying. Uh, but we also ran permutation test uh, and compared the never treated and treated. Uh, basically, bottom line, Gen AI is promoting more equal value capture. Among the adopted, people who adopt, the favorites gets distributed more evenly. Concentration decreases. So this is sort of like points to the fact that adoption of generative AI have some sort of equalizing value for value capture, where value here is defined as favorites. Okay, so I'm gonna skip the robustness checks. It's in the paper. I like to say, you know, the human AI generative synesthesia is happening, right? Um, uh, I'm gonna skip the takeaways, but I think it's interesting to see uh, People who are usually, who are good at visual stuff, they're not necessarily good with the generative AI tools because it's a different types of creativity, right? Once the visual part is the artistic mechanical automation is there, it's now people with the ability to think of a new stuff that could excel. So it switches the uh, required skill. And this was, <coughs> it's very much obvious in that experiment I ran in my class where people who are like lifelong artists were stuck. And the, the first time when I was never drew stuff in his life, uh, or he, he did, but like he was never like a serious, he never drew stuff for an art's sake, right? He doodles maybe, but he won first place. So it's, uh, it's shifting um, venue of ideation um, ability. So it's more like a generative synesthesia happening at the humanity level. And I think, yeah. So does that mean that you, you, you will definitely extend the analysis to those people who just entered after, you know, the journey was introduced? Because that's probably a pool of people who are, who thought of themselves as not being artists before, but now I've seen. Yeah, well, well I think 
<laughs> we have so many of these cues. Like I think people have a great idea. Like Sina, <clears throat> what Sina mentioned is like the, the for us next thing. Like the um, or we are actually doing that right now. And then we would like to explore like a mimetic diffusion of uh, generative synesthesia uh, among the network, and or even before the human like individual versus the aggregate. Another kind of like next thing, have you thought about this? Have you thought about like non-image stuff, you know, like creativity and like a text or even like creativity and ideas? Have you guys begun to think about this at all? Yeah, so that one is very crowded. I think like, I know at least like seven different teams working on that. Um, I, I'll stay with this. Like, I, think, <laughs> I mean, I have like, we have like four, four papers lined up, I think. But yeah, I mean, I'm 100% interested in that. But yeah, and that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening.